Be sure to thank HyperX Thermaltake and Sapphire in the comments. Without them, we wouldn't be here. And also be sure to click on the links in the description. All right, so we're here at the Nikon booth. We're not gonna go through too much stuff because they didn't release that much of CES, but they did release this. Check this out. This is a 300 millimeter F4 uh, IS lens. I almost said L, sorry. Nikon, uh, Canon shooter here. But this is some really awesome stuff. Look at the size of it. Actually, this is a Fresnel front element, and it's giving you full VR. Uh, obviously, all your normal, you know, you can pick where you focus. Uh, you have a sport mode for panning, and then you have all your on and off focus. But look at the size of this package. This is a full on professional style. Uh, it's about the size of a one, uh, one or a 135, 180 uh, prime lens, but it's a 300, so if the 70 200 is not enough and you're on a crop sensor, you can use something like this or it's greater on a full frame, and it's in a tiny little package, it's gonna fit in your bag, it's gonna go with you anywhere in the world. Good stuff. This is Canon and this is my Mecca because I shoot Canon and I have every Canon lens and this is the one that I don't have yet that I really want. Check this out. Uh, this is the 2 to 400 F4L IS2 uh, USM. This is the kind of lens that you want to get if you're shooting uh, birds or wildlife or sports, but you need to have a 400, a 500, a 600, maybe a 700, and you need to be able to take it with you anywhere in the world. If you're on safari in Africa, this is what uh, you're going to want because this is a zoom lens. It's a 2 to 400 zoom, but it also has a built-in 1.4x teleconverter. So you can go ahead and flip that switch right there, and all of a sudden, uh, you just went uh, a lot a lot longer on your lens. Your focal length just increased by 1.4. Uh, and if you throw this on a crop sensor body like a 7D Mark II or a, uh, on a full frame body like this 1D uh, X, you have a lot of versatility as far as what your focal length is going to be. Uh, this is also a very fast lens, so it's f4 without the converter, and with the converter on, it's an f5.6. Uh, but it's got all the features you could possibly think of on a high-end L glass super telephoto lens. Huge front element, and uh, you know it's really, really expensive. And you might think that this stuff is crazy to spend. Uh, I think this lens is probably like ten thousand dollars or something. But when you consider that you get basically a 400, a 500, a 600, or maybe even up to an 800 millimeter focal uh, length lens, this is actually a steal because you get one lens, you throw it in your bag with the rest of your regular smaller lenses, and you are a super versatile badass who can do just about anything anywhere, anytime, in any weather condition. So uh, super sick lens, and uh, yeah, we're not done yet. We're going to check a couple more things out of Canon, so uh, stick around. All right, so also, not exactly the newest thing, but very exciting in the world of crop sensor DSLRs. This is the 7D Mark II. Uh, this is also sporting the new 2470 F4L IS, so this is the new stuff from uh, Canon. Now, this camera, the 7D changed things. You know, the 7, uh, 5D Mark II was really epic, but the 7D Mark II is also very epic. My first camera ever, digital, was a 7D. I did my, started my entire career with it, and now we have the Mark II. So, what's new about this? Well, it's now 20 megapixel sensor, and it has an even better autofocus system than the 1DX and the 5D Mark III has. A 65 point all cross type sensor uh, autofocus. So very, very fast, and it covers almost the entire frame. It's still crop sensor, obviously, but it does shoot 10 frames a second. It's got dual card slots, which is the first for the 7D. Uh, before you had CF, now you have CF and SD. It's got the dual pixel technology that you'd find for video, as in the C100, and I think also maybe the C300, but it's the, it autofocus basically in video, which is like mind blown. Um, so yeah, pretty good stuff. Let me see if there's anything I missed. Oh, it has a built-in GPS, 100% viewfinder, so almost like a full-frame camera, even though 70 already had that. And uh, up to 16,000 ISO, so it'll probably be a lot better than the uh, 70 was uh, in low light. And the 2470 F4L IS, the new 2470, so you don't have to have the full-on uh, 2.8, which is very expensive, which is a beautiful lens and I adore, it's great, uh, but this is an F4 version and it also has IS, so with these new cameras like the Mark III, the 7D Mark II, you have really good high ISO uh, performance, really good in low light, and you can run an F4L lens, like you don't really need to have that much depth of field, you just zoom in a little bit tighter, you push closer to your subject, and you close that distance, you get the same depth of field, and you have a much smaller lens as you can see, it's actually much smaller, much lighter, and it's way, way, way more affordable, but it's just as sharp as these new uh, next generation uh, 2470 f2.8L lenses are, and you get the IS for video, so no brainer, awesome lens, and uh, awesome camera. This, the original 70 changed my life. I wouldn't be here right now if I hadn't gotten the 7D, you know, five or six years ago. So 7D Mark II changed your life. Let's do this. And we're here at Tiffin Booth at CES 2015, and this is the Steadicam Curve. So they've been making something like this for a minute, but it was only available for iPhone and for GoPro. But now they've introduced this top part right here, and if you can see it, this is a universal phone adapter. So your Android phones, your iPhones, iPhone, up everything up to a six plus is going to fit on here. And so if you're, uh, you know, if you want to get smooth footage, I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to hit record here. Let it settle and watch this. Boom! Super smooth. 
Steadicam action in a tiny package. Whoa! It's super easy to balance. It's just got some weights, up and back, forward motion to balance it, uh, front and back. It's really easy and you can mount any phone you want on here. And uh, what's the MSRP on this? 99.95. 99 bucks. So if you want steady motion, you want something you can take with you, this is a perfect little tool. So let's see what else they have. And uh, we are looking at their variable ND filters now. When you buy variable ND filters, there's cheap ones, there's in between ones and there's really expensive ones and the cheap ones are going to give you color casts they're not going to work uh, but Tiffin has made this whole line of Varian D's they've been out for a year they're not new this year but they're actually uh, as far as I've researched which I've done extensive extensive research into they're actually the best that you can get for the money um, so for the price that you're going to pay for variable NDs which you absolutely need if you want to be outside and use a shallow depth of field uh, Tiffin is actually the best another really cool option uh, or thing that they came out with this year at CES is this line of filters so these are their 10 stop filters so if you've ever used like a Lee uh, big stopper 10 stop filter you uh, you know you know what these are they're basically 10 stops of ND you can't see anything through them uh, they're going to cut down 10 stops of light but these are three different kinds uh, this is the hot version the hot mirror so this is um, IRND um, it's 10 stops but it won't let any IR through so if you're using an older red camera red one red epic uh, not the red dragon as much but uh, any of those cameras any sensor that's not uh, debayered uh, in the camera so those Fuji uh, X Pro ones that kind of stuff you use this uh, this is an in-between and uh, it's kind of it feathers the difference between IR cut or full IR cut and then no IR cut and it gives you a slightly better skin tone for certain cameras like the F55 or the red uh, epic dragon and they're actually won a Academy Award they're nominated for Academy Award and they won an Emmy which they actually have right there and then finally they have uh, your normal 10 stop filter so if you're uh, taking pictures of moving water uh, you can throw this on there they have a little calculating a, ch a chart that you calculate your exposure with and it'll actually tell you hey you need to do like a, a seven minute exposure and that's gonna make your water look like it's fog and you can get some really surreal looking photos so yeah awesome stuff from Tiffin let's go to the next place all right, so back again at the Sony booth and more cool stuff. We came here originally to see the A7S right now. Uh, there's so many people around the A7S that we can't even get to it, but they have a fully rigged A7S uh, for 4K video production right behind us, and we're going to take a look at it. So check this thing out. This is what it looks like when it's fully rigged and ready to go. So you're looking at the A7S. Uh, it can shoot 1080 in the card. It has the best low light on the market. Everyone knows that already. It shoots in moonlight. You can light a production with a freaking iPhone. It's ridiculous. But if you want to shoot 4K, you uh, throw this thing as the Atomos Shogun. You can throw it on there. It's going to give you way more and peaking and all this great stuff it records in 4k ProRes, and then on top of everything uh, they have the new f4 28 to 135 zoom lens so this is a lens specifically made for this mount and it's a, a lens that's going to fill the gap you have so much iso performance on this camera that you can shoot at f4 this is 28 to 135 you have the entire spectrum you have a uh, ringed gear so you can pull focus smoothly you have a uh, ringed zoom and smooth and you have a smooth aperture as well you even have a rocker for a power zoom for a servo so if you want to do that you can and uh, basically this whole package is something that you can buy this camera for almost nothing I mean this costs less than a professional DSLR buy this really nice recorder you're gonna uh, send out 4k to this record in 4k you can go out SDI uh, you can reshoot ProRes and you have audio you can rig it up with a map box and all the goodies and a really nice sense like this shoot a production shoot a commercial shoot a movie for almost no budget it's unbelievable and on top of everything it shoots in moonlight so the a7s really badass it's great for normal people with their 12 megapixel sensor like the one that they have over there or if you're in production and you want to rig it up something like this uh, this is nasty in the uh, value department pretty crazy I have no idea what's going on here but this is a 4k super old ultra wide fisheye lens and it's really really cool we're here at the Panasonic booth we've already seen some really cool stuff they have the uh, the new Veracam 35 they have the model Tesla uh, Tesla Model X here which is not really even a car yet it doesn't exist it's the new Tesla SUV that is coming to the market sometime this year or next year it's super awesome we saw a 4k mini camcorder has a selfie nation cam but check this out this is like probably like one of the coolest things here uh, you know, as you know, here at Tech Syndicate, we do use the uh, GH4 as our main camera, but this is a little bit more than the standard GH4. This is a GH4. Uh, this is the battery pack they have. This gives you an extra battery, SDI outs, XLR ins, Swiftronic plate with a full Zacuto rig, uh, like a Sumacron 35 millimeter prime lens, and the full package. So everything you could ever mount to have out for your GH4 is here. Uh, they don't have a speed booster, but they don't need it. But uh, yeah, check this out, Oz Z7Q uh, recorder, so ProRes 4K recording on this. And uh, they even have to use four 3G SDI cables to get the 4K signal uncompressed to the recorder. So yeah, this is uh, pretty fancy. Panasonic has ruined me. I can't even watch 4K anymore. It's not big enough.
So yeah, this is the uh, 8K 55 inch LCD we just saw. It is an IPS Pro panel. It has a 178 degree viewing angle. You can see it from any freaking place you look. It's got 100% of the RGB uh, color space. It's got uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. And get this, the resolution is 7680 by 4320. Uh, and that's including, you know, it's just amazing. It has a 1500 to one contrast ratio. And uh, it also has a 400 CDM squared brightness panel. So we just saw a bunch of stuff on it. And the applications for this are amazing. We just saw like eight pages up at once. We saw huge spreadsheets. We saw medical applications and we got to see like, I don't know what you'd call it, but like Olympics porn shot in 8K at the last Olympics on a, a Sony F65, I believe. This stuff is unbelievable and uh, we were probably one of the first people to actually see it in person. So that's uh, pretty cool, yeah. All right, finally, the last video that we're gonna do for photography at CES 2015, the Pentax 645Z. Not new by any means, but really, popular camera for the price point you cannot get a medium format 50 megapixel camera like you can with the thing it's just three frames a second 14 stops at dynamic range it's got a whole line of lenses including the vintage throwback lenses from the 70s anything that was on the film days can go to this and it has highest ISO capability so unlike your uh, phase one or your Hasselblad's or your Mamiya's or your whatever leaf uh, that kind of stop you and you can't really go past 800 they're not that great past 400 even this thing goes to uh, 206,000 or something like that so very high ISO and even when you're taking uh, high-end photos up to 1600 it actually still looks pretty darn clean and uh, shoot cinema D uh, sorry DNG you can shoot raw you can shoot 14-bit files so uh, amazing camera take a look at this thing up close ergonomics are unbelievable the glass is super fast but the ergonomics this is a really comfortable camera to hold in your hand you have your Dead. dials Dead. Damn it. We all know HyperX makes gaming hardware, but they also have a YouTube channel centered on gaming culture that is about to hit 100,000 subscribers. Go ahead and click here to check it out. You may not know it, but Sapphire is sort of the AMD brand. They even make the OEM cards for AMD themselves. Click on the screen to see what's new and uh, maybe some secrets. Thermaltake always has a lot going on, but this year they really have a lot going on and they have upped their game. Click on the screen to check it out. All right, so finally, two more things from Canon. This is the uh, SX610HS, brand new little tiny pocket camera. This is a 20 megapixel camera. Uh, $249.99 is the MSRP. You'll probably be at it cheaper on the street. It's got, shoots full HD in 24. It's got uh, active NFC. It's got a built-in flash. It's got Wi-Fi so you can take an awesome picture uh, and then put it on your Instagram in like 10 seconds. Really cool little camera. If you're looking for like holiday gifts and stuff, it's probably a little late for that, but whatever next holidays or make up a holiday in the middle of the year in January and then um, a slightly step above from this one is, is this camera right here uh, this is a, the C500 with the brand new uh, CineServo 50 to 1000 millimeter lens the f5 to 8.9 LIS uh, PL mount with a 1.5x extender on the C500 with the uh, Airy PCA professional camera accessories rig on it and uh, this is a radiant images map box and an O'Connor 120EX with servo zooms on the other side, this thing is disgusting and it's only a little bit more. So, I mean, if, if you're on the fence, you know, between this and this, you know, it's like, you know, it's like $150,000, a little more than that. It's not a big deal. It's totally worth it. Uh, 1080, 4K, JPEG, RAW, you know, servo zoom, 18X optical zoom. So, you know, yeah, consider it.